Um, this is a Feed Your Starving website. This is about um, feeds. Feeds is a module that's going to help us import some data into a website, um, basically add content to our website. Um, sometimes people use it for um, um, importing legacy data. It's a good, really good way to use that. Um, if you have a, uh, say you have a, a file with 12,000 rows in it, um, how are you going to import that and get it into your site? So there's a feeds, there's the project URL. Um, feeds can do quite a few things. I'm not going to go over everything there, but uh, the things that I've used it for in the past are um, creating content from RSS, um, importing data from a comma separated file, um, and it, you can see it'll create a node, users. Um, if I have a, my own custom content type, like a car or house, I can uh, import data into that content type and create a thousand, a thousand nodes of type car. Um, you can export it. Um, also have batched imports, really nice, so that every time the cron runs, um, it'll import another 50 or 100 records. I think it might be 50 is the default. I don't remember. One of those two. Both ways. Um, no, there's a different set of uh, modules that'll do that. Um, views. Does anybody remember views? Uh, remember? Yeah, it's one of the views modules. Um, you, can, you can put it out as XML or. Views feed, or, yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm going to start off with uh, let's see, data imports. Um, there's a few different ways you can do it. You can um, import, you can upload and import at the same time. Let's say you just have a really small file. Um, one of your users has to upload 50 records every Monday or whatever. Um, they can do it that way. Um, import with batch. Um, like I mentioned earlier, 12,000 records. You don't want to import them all at the same time. It could you know, really slow down your site or hose it or, or, or uh, you know, just uh, take it down. Um, so the, the batch will process them uh, a group at a time. Um, and the periodic import is if you have, um, maybe you have an automated process that FTPs a file up to your server and you want to import that file every, um, every five days because it's always different. So you can do it that way, too. Um, let's see, RSS with the aggregator module or the feeds module? Aggregator comes with uh, Drupal, Drupal core. Um, feeds is an extra module you have to download. Um, I, I finally actually just compared these two because I, I hadn't used aggregator too much and it's kind of a neat module. They both have their function so if, if you need to import RSS uh, RSS feed definitely take a look at both because um, they do different things. Um, the aggregator uh, it stores the data um, in a separate table. It's not indexed by search so I can't search on that content. Um, it has some features to create a block of uh, a block of links to an RSS feed. Um, whereas the feeds module creates an actual node. It's searchable. Um, you can create a node based on a particular content type and assign different attributes to it. 
I can even make, you know, when I do an import, I can make every node unpublished if I want so that I can review it first. Okay, now I'm going to go through some examples. Of, if you can't hear me, if you were in my last session, you knew that. Anyway, um, I was in jujitsu and I choked some people out and they choked me out and it was a great class. So if you need a demonstration of that, let me know. This is my last presentation, so I don't have to worry about talking anymore. And um, uh, John, if you want me to demo on you later, I can demo. Okay, all right. Okay. It's always fun. So, Um, okay, so the first one is going to be the, the file upload. And this is what I have, this is what I have defined so far. And let me, let me just real quick pull up the, um, pull up what I'm talking about, the spreadsheet I'm talking about. Of course, I lost it here. Oh, there it is. So here's my common separated file. I just created a bunch of dummy data, um, birth date, you know, full name, first name, whatever, whatever you want. The first row is my um, column identifiers. Um, actually, first, let me show you how it works. Let me show you working. Here's the importer screen. Kind of gives you some basic instructions. Um, gives you some options. And since I've already already done the upload one time, it, it remembers where the file is. I can choose the file, a different file if I want to. So this is kind of nice for smaller uploads, smaller imports, because it's got to do that whole um, upload to the server first. So can I interrupt? Yeah, yeah. Yes, it does. Yep. No, feeds generated that for me. Which is, it's kind of a cool screen. I mean, I can, you know, as you see, I can download a template and, and start scra start from scratch if I want. So there, just read the file that's already on my server and imported ten items. Let me double check. Oh, yep, I got 10 items in there. If I want, I can delete them. Um, I can look at the log process. So maybe I was expecting 15, and I only got 10. I can look at that here. This is great. Yeah, yep, I'll show you the, the kind of node and, the, and where the data is going in just a minute. You betcha. But it, yep, it's creating a, a brand new node. So I just created that that content. So if I go to um, my content page, you're going to see all of these different nodes that I just created. Okay. So let me go into the configuration of this. And this is all. This is basically just a step-by-step -step process. Um, the very first thing you do is you give it a name, a little description. Uh, most of these are, you know, kind of kept kept at the default. Um, the standalone form, that's what creates that page that, that we just saw in order to import it. Just, just leaving it at that will give you that page to, to do that, give you the file upload capability, and you're good to go. Um, periodic import, you know, that's if um, if that file changes, maybe it changes um, every night at midnight, somebody uploads a new file. That's where I can say, hey, redo this import every day. Import on submission, so it's going to process it right away, or I can process it in the background. Um, I'll show you how that how it does that. It's not specifically on the file itself. It's on 
the content that's within the file. If that makes any sense. You'll see it in just a minute. Um, so we're working with the file upload in this particular case. The different types of files you want to allow the user to upload. And I'll show an example of this, uh, this setting right here. It's kind of, um, um, actually, I'll show you real quick. If, if I were to check this on, supply path to file or direct, directory directly. Um, basically, what that does is, I've, let's say I've already got it on my server. Somebody FTP'd this 2 megabyte or 50 megabyte, whatever, file. They FTP'd it up there. Where is it at on my server? I can say specifically where all my uploads are going. So if somebody has FTP access to just one folder, then um, I don't have to worry about them uh, messing around with um, messing it up. They just put it right in that folder, and I, I say in my importer where that is going to be at. Um, I'll show you an example just real quick. So this is exactly the same except for that pretty much that checkbox. I'm telling it where, where that file is at. So I've got my file system already set up, and it's in my public files under this particular folder. So I don't have to go in here and import it if I don't want to. Um, this is where, you know, the whoever, the marketing person, whoever is, they're uploading this every day to this, to this folder. Makes it real easy for them. They just do it real quick, and then my import takes care of it. Okay. Um, what kind of parser am I using? Um, I'm going to do a comma separated file. I can do, you know, there's several other files. You can even add your own parser if there's a, um, one that you like. You're going to need to uh, do some coding for that, I do believe, though. Settings for the comma file. Um, what kind of delimiter does it have? Does it have headers in that file? Mine does have headers, so I'm leaving that unchecked. And here is the option, on, am I going to create a node, um, taxonomy terms, or users? And you'll see every time I, actually, you won't see this, but when I change one of these major functions up here, like parser or fetcher, this section is going to change. It's going to give me different settings. So since I'm doing a node processor here, I have different settings for a node processor. And here's my settings for a node processor. Basically, how is it going to take that data and put it into a node? One of the, one of the options is, if I find that node already, don't update it, because I don't want to override any data. Um, or I can replace the node, or I can just update it, update any data that I find. And what it does is it uses a a unique identifier in order to determine that. If the file has changed, maybe the file's bigger or smaller or whatever, um, it doesn't really lo look at that. It looks at the content within it. You need to have something in that content to say that this is the unique node that we're talking about. And that, that I created right here. Just with a simple, um, just a simple function in my Excel spreadsheet. I used that before I, I exported it to a comma file. So that's my, in this simple case, that's my unique identifier. How to process the text. Um, what, what type of content am I going to create out of this? Now, since I'm using a node processor, I need to know what kind of uh, node it's going to create. And I've already, I created my own content type. I created a contact which has the name, birth date. You know, I can add phone number later on. Um, if, then I have to say which phone number goes where. Like business, cell phone. Mm -hmm. I'll show you where that, the, the next step is the mapping and how to do that. Um, who is going to be the author of that node? You need to, you need to associate that node with somebody. And does that node expire? Maybe it's, um, 
maybe it's inf very informational content, but I don't really care about it after three months. So it'll automatically delete it after three months. Now here's a here's the part that probably takes the longest. Maybe you know the other ones are just really quick uh, click and saves. But this one is you got to think it out just a little bit. Um, first, you say which field in your source file you're you're working with, and then what target in that node that that source field goes to. In this case, I've got I've got this column, this ID. This is my unique identifier. So that's going to go into my target of the good. The unique identifier and it gives you a bunch of options it based on the content type that I've selected in my previous step it gave me first name favorite color birth date uh, about me the all these different fields these are all these are fields some of these fields are in my content type some of these uh, the other fields like publish date publish status um, those are um, um, part of the feeds module they, it gives it to you automatically No, no, that comes with feeds. Okay. Yep. And it, then that's where you specify that that's a unique target. If I didn't want to do that, let's say I, my content was always uh, last name, SSN, birth date, and something else. Those are the four fields that create a unique piece of content. Unique content. I could select those if I wanted to, if it was defined that way. But the GUID just makes it a little bit easier. I just have one field to worry about. And there's also, you know, a nice little help here um, of what the targets mean. The, you know, these are these are all ones that I created in my content type. So you specify that, you save it. go to my import screen and then that's where I start my import off um, now if we look at a piece of the content so obviously my birthday is 1987 August 15th I'm like 25 um, so there's my birth date my color favorite color last name first name there's all that content within there If I edit this based on my settings, if I edit any of this, it, it's going to update it the next time it does that import. Any questions so far on that? So the, um, on the edit tab that edits, that's editing the, the data you just imported. Mm -hmm. So I got rid of those fields, and so what I can do is I can try it again. And if, you know, since demos don't always go successfully, then the, uh, we can give it another try. So it's still only imported, not not this this particular run, but total it's imported ten items, which is good. That means it didn't create ten new nodes. It's only done. It's only um, imported ten total. And it didn't work. Of course, it worked last night. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, 
I'll have to look at that because it, uh, I'm serious, it did work last night. I'm not lying. <laughs> All right, well, I'll take a look at that, but yeah. I'm in the um, file importer here. I have had it, you know, kind of hiccup going through this. Um, it, sometimes it forgets the settings or, you know, it, a resave actually changes it. Still should show that I, it updated a node. But, yeah, definitely nice demo bug I'll take a look at that though um, let's see the other thing was uh, um, an RSS feed and I've got a blog somewhere and I just want to import that and in like I said before using the feeds importer it's going to actually pull that content it's going to create a brand new node um, using the aggregator um, it works a little bit differently, um, and I'll show that in a little bit. So here's some, some of the basic settings. You know, every three days I want to do this because maybe I don't blog very much. I don't know. I don't need to do it every 15 minutes. It's just going to bog the system down a little bit more. If I have 100 of these going, I don't want to do them every 15 minutes. Every three days. Um, you see some of the little bit difference, you know, in the uh, contact importer, I had a file upload, but now I'm using an HTTP fetcher. So a little bit different here. And instead of a comma file, I'm using a, uh, a parser for RSS. So I selected that one, and so my settings have changed down here. Now there's nothing for that. That's cool. Um, and I want to create uh, nodes. And I have a content type of blog import. And also the mapping too, you need to create a mapping for this. And this has, you know, has help on um, the source and the target. Now, when I was doing a contact importer, since it didn't know what my comma separated file looked like, I had to, I had to enter those field names in there. Um, let me show you just real quick. So I had to type in these names, copy and paste these names in here. But since it's since it knows um, knows what a blog typically has for that type of RSS feed, it gives me the options for source. So I've got the title. Um, in, in an RSS feed, the description is actually turned into the body. And then there's item URL that I use also. Now I can run this on cron if I want, or I can just um, import it. Um, yeah, yep. So Drupal will, you can run cron every one, three hours, whatever, but there's also some extra modules that'll allow you to um, run, run a task every five minutes or at 12.04 um, a.m., something like this maybe I, um, 
probably not a good connection, maybe. Um, something like this I might run in the morning, 1 o'clock in the morning. So here's the, some content that was created the last time I did an import. And this has the, there's the image. Here's the reference. Basically, this is uh, wh where the data came from. So as you can see, this, you know, this is content within the, within the site. I think it's going to reference the original, yep. Good point, though. Um, I haven't really worked with that. I haven't worked with importing the images, too, before. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, cool. Cool. These images are actually... Uh, links to the image that's on my blog. They're not actually downloaded into the Drupal site. But John was saying that there's another module, there's another module for that, that will actually pull that image down and store it in your site. Text format, yeah. Yep. Okay, so there's my blog. I'm importing that. Um, the other one is the feeds aggregator. Now this is a. Uh, um, let's see here. This is basically like um, maybe I have a theme to my website about cars or muscle cars, and there's a couple other sites that I like to read, and I want to, um, you know, I want my visitors to know about about these uh, other sites that have a lot of good information. Um, this basically, you know, gives you a little snippet of that text of that feed, and then creates links to that um, article on the other website. So here's the, these are the basic options, a lot fewer options than the feeds. You know, how often do I update um, items in the block? What kind of category they go into? This might die too, no? So one of the settings was how many items in the block. So this block right here, I didn't have to, I didn't have to create that. The aggregator module created this new block um, with these most recent articles. And if you look at the, I don't know if you can see that, but that link actually, that goes off site, that links to the um, actual article. I gotta try it just to see if the network is running. <laughs> yep. So it got you know redirected me to this site. So it's not it's not pointing to content in my Drupal site. It's just a link to that content off site.
Yes. Yep. The only thing would be uh, um, it's not searchable. So when you're in the Drupal site, I can't search for oh. for those yeah. for those items. But I, you know, it's nice to see that like uh, maybe on the front page, you want a block of most recent content. Um, you know, it'd be nice to see that sometimes. Yep. Yep. Um, there's a lot more to feeds. I know there's a lot more to it. I um, don't use it for everything. Mostly, it's the uh, you know the RSS imports and the the data imports can be um, very nice. The, some of the um, the batch processing, I I haven't shown you that, but um, you know that's handled with cron every time. Um, uh, there's one module called I think it's called Alicia cron underscore cron. There's another nice cron module too, but basically you can configure that to you know every 10 minutes import another batch of a data, so so that you're not bogging down your site. I don't remember if I have that installed or not. I do. I think it's actually uh, the job scheduler cron. I can run just that cron job if I want, or I can um, change it. Every hour, um, I could do midnight if I wanted to. I could disable that if I wanted to. Give you a lot more options. So putting that together with a, a large data import, um, it, it's, it's almost a have to do that. You know, uh, 500,000 records, you'd have to do that in a batch mode just to do that. Now you could do it through MySQL, yeah, you could do it that way too, but um, not everybody's proficient. I'm not proficient in MySQL like that, so I'd prefer to do it this way. Yeah. Um, I have a colleague who is trying, he's, I think he's working with the import, and he's trying to map um, taxonomies to the term offerings on import, and I guess he was struggling with it. He came to me. I've used, um, I would assume you could only because I've used, um, I've done data imports that have like several fields that are node references. Yeah, so, he's, he's got no reference but not, oh, not the term. Um, I know there's, uh, there's some patches. Is it Drupal 7? Yeah. yeah. Um, I had to do one patch for like a multi, um, multi-reference. Um, so there might there might be something out on the out on the Drupal site. I, I haven't actually done it though. So. There is a table called Node, yep, and um, um, so when you create a piece of content, then within Drupal, yep. Um, I don't know if I've actually ever said this one out loud, or talked about it out loud. Um, it creates an entry in that Node table that basically points that that has references and 
for, for the content type. So let's say you have the content type of uh, car. It's going to um, have a node ID. It's going to have a revision ID. And so that node table stores some of that basic information about it. Stores the body, the title. There's a node revision that stores the body, I think. There's a couple. Yeah. Yeah, and the node stores like what type of content it is, so that it knows how to how to retrieve the rest of the content. Like the image would be um, image, or let's say you create a field called first name, that would be stored in in a separate table. R related to that. Yep. Yeah, it'd be, uh, the, the, yeah, the simplest, uh, the simplest case is um, I can add a contact this way, a brand new contact, and it's going to store that in Drupal with uh, <clears throat> using the no table and the uh, and the correct tables that were created for this con uh, content type. Yeah, it's got a it's got a special name, content type, contacts or whatever you know, and and depending on the fields I create, it's gonna might create some more tables with it. But they they all it knows how to join them and combine them to view them. Um, but the simplest case is creating one at a time. The feeds basically just does that, just a, over and over and over again, you know. So it it doesn't create any new tables during the import. It just creates the data that you would normally do um, on a one-by-one -one basis. So the aggr so aggregator would bring in content that you wouldn't be, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't function in your node because you couldn't add new, uh, add new nodes, new additional contents. Correct, correct. Yeah. Yep. So you couldn't use it in the views? Correct. No, no, yeah, because you... Not it's not a node, it's not... Right, it's not, it doesn't have an entry in the node table when you're using aggregator. So it, there's no way to, to it, it doesn't, search doesn't work on it, views. Um, it yeah. it right, it, it's, it's got, a, it's, it's all in its separate table and it's got just a snippet of the, of the text um, and then the link to that uh, original item. Right, just just to show show that data, it, you know, by default, the uh, or not by default, but out of the box, aggregator makes it just read only. It it pulls in a little bit of the you know the snippet, the link, and everything. You can't go in and edit that link or edit the the body of that um, of that article. Um, it, of course, you could do custom coding to change that, but you know that that's part of aggregator. That's why it's there. And then you know the feeds module, if you um, just import it into a, your own content type, then you can go and edit it. You can put permissions on that content type and um, change it however you want to. Yeah, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. That's how I would import a bunch of data that 
yeah, I want to I want to keep around. I want to import it from a legacy system, and then I want users to be able to edit or add to it. So maybe my Drupal site has ten additional fields because it's bigger and better. So I want to import some of those fields from a legacy system, and then give the user access to to add to it. I'm gonna call the DBA and have him do it. I'm gonna have the yeah. I'll try it. Yeah, I'll try it. But yeah, you'd you'd have to find some way to, you know, you you can you know using um, using node references. Uh, you could still do it a different way. You, you could reference one node from another, so you wouldn't have to flatten everything. But it would you know it would take some planning to do that. Yeah. Yeah, and there's actually there's a company I don't remember the name of the company, and then that's all they did was migrating legacy systems into Drupal. Yeah, and I think was Acquia bottom. Yep. So cool. So start your own business and get bought by Acquia. Curve. Yeah, they were really good. Really good at what they did. So yeah. 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 You bet. Yeah.
thousand records once a week. Okay, so yeah, I, would, I would say that that's a situation where you just ran into something somewhere with about a thousand entries and every yeah. I think short of going in and hard coding a check for does this exist, uh, Beach just doesn't recognize it. He doesn't check to see. So uh, we ended up adding and deleting a lot before we, we acknowledge that you have to make sure you have it all in line. But if you're going to do it in every week. It might be something put out on the Drupal on the local board site. That would definitely be something I'd love to see. It would say it does a ton of effort if we didn't have to duplicate every time. Um, yeah. I'm not sure about this, but you might want to try. There's a module called UUID, which is a universally unique identifier, and that might help you make a unique ID key for each of your rows, and that might uh, help it to be able to determine if things are unique. Yeah, I've, ha I've had that situation happen where, you know, like you're talking about, and it, I went back into the configuration screen and I removed my GUID configuration and then I added it again and then it worked okay. My update started working okay. Maybe it was with an older version of feeds, but one, one case I was working with, it was like, it's 12,000 records in the spreadsheet, and so it was doing a batch import. It took like, you know, five or six hours, you know, 50 at a time to, to get that done. So I didn't want to delete them every time. Um, I wanted to update. So, yeah, delete, deleting is, works good, but in my case, I, I, I couldn't do that. So for some reason, it worked after I saved it again. So there's some other bugs in there that they're working on, too. I've had it try to import and delete at the same time, and that's really confusing. So it's sitting at 27% done importing and, you know, 87% done deleting. You know, it's deleting and importing at the same time. And they're working on that bug too. Well, they're still talking, so if you want to get out first and get to lunch first, we can <laughs> do that. But hey, thanks, everybody. If you have any more questions, uh, stop on up.